Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. So have you been at that point where you have tried everything and there's just so much conflicting data and no matter what you do, uh, someone is telling you it's wrong or bad and now you are stuck, you're spinning your wheels, it's the struggle bus uh, and you just don't know what to do anymore. Yeah, me too. So let's talk about that. Hey everyone, welcome to the Radical Geek YouTube channel. Happy Wednesday. Um, today we're just going to talk a little bit about what kind of diet should you follow uh, or food plan if that's your preferred terms because uh, that's what we're doing, a, a lifestyle change for better health. Uh, there's so much out there right now and there is research that supports basically all of it uh, whether it is a good old-fashioned ketogenic food plan if you uh, follow a carnivore food plan uh, if you're doing a, a bbbe uh, protocol for a particular reason uh, uh, eating uh, dr Naiman's one-to-one -one ratios there's so many options out there that it kind of piles up and amongst ourselves, we're like scrapping over it, like, and shaming people. Uh, I'm sorry, but we don't need to shame people for eating a big salad. If that works for them, that's fantastic. In fact, I've eaten a big salad like um, yesterday and I might have another one today because I've got it and I don't want the food to go bad. So. It does work for me. Uh, so what should you be eating? Do you need to follow one-to-one? -one? What does that even mean? Uh, do you need to do BBBE? Uh, should you just be eating carnivore? Is keto bad for you now? What gives? So the answer is, of course, it's complicated. It's also not complicated at the same time. It's, it is hard sometimes because the information gets very overwhelming and uh, people are emotionally invested in their health changes. And when it works for them, uh, you know, they really want you to follow their lead and their direction because they want you to have that same great experience that they are having. Sometimes our messaging gets a little bit scrambled and maybe sometimes uh, we're a little too aggressive. Not that we shouldn't uh, share our successes. Absolutely. Absolutely share those. But don't shame somebody for doing things that they find success in as well. And if someone is having a struggle, uh, just share your knowledge and share, but uh, let them make their choices with that information. They can gather it all up and they can work through it. So I got my tea. So, but what does that mean? So in, we're just going to call this, we're in a lower, in a reduced or eliminated carbohydrate sort of sphere here. Uh, and because that's what really my life experience is, that has what has uh, helped with my cancer remission. And that is what is controlling and actually preventing my seizures at this point in time. Uh, as a side effect, I also lost well over 120 pounds. So there's that, that's a great thing too. A lot of people actually shift to a ketogenic food plan for weight loss, even though it's technically not a weight loss diet. So, okay, so you've got your old school keto. We'll have to talk, one day we're just gonna do a video and do a huge breakdown about ketogenic food plans in general. But today we're gonna keep it high level. Uh, carnivore. Uh, one-to-one, -one, Dr. Naiman's protein protocol, and BBBE. So how do these things all fall together? Well, first of all, every single one of them is a ketogenic diet. Uh, every single one of them is a low carbohydrate diet. If you're thinking about it in sort of a funnel, not in an MLM bad way, but you've got your ketogenesis, your low, your low carbohydrate to your ketogenics, carnivore, well, let's put one-to-one -one carnivore and BBBE. Now, 
we've had some pretty huge uh, impacts and a lot of words surrounding BBVE. And uh, I had to check, I was looking at my screen and I thought my watch was lost, but it's the wrong hand. It's just looking <laughs> reversed in the screen. Um, yeah, so uh, BBVE is not meant to be your forever food plan. Uh, I'm sure that there are people who can eat that way forever, but you might run into some bumps. We don't know enough about it yet, but the whole thing about that was to do an elimination to help your body with healing, to help kickstart where you may have been stalled, uh, to help find your way uh, into a, a better healthy eating plan. It's absolutely great for you if you have an autoimmune disease or uh, a lot of inflammation or if you've been hitting a plateau or stall, uh, if you're having some high blood sugars, uh, all that kind of stuff. And of course, I am not a medical doctor. Let's get that right out of the way. This is not medical advice. Anytime you start making changes to your food plans, you should work with your medical professional not follow uh, and the advice of an internet rando who's not even a doctor and is basically just sharing a random things I've heard on the internet. Uh, if you want to talk to doctors who have experience uh, in these kind of food plans, you can make an appointment with Verta Health. Uh, that's a it's a huge facility. Uh, they've got a research center here in Ohio at OSU. Uh, it's run by uh, Dr. Zvolik and Dr. Fitty. They've been around the block a few times. You may have read some of their books. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Barry is not seeing patients, but you can join his Patreon and you can uh, uh, pay for uh, quick little questions for Q&As on his live streams. So there are options so you can talk to them. Uh, you can uh, book an appointment with Dr. Silas, so he's pretty amazing, But and he's a weight loss specialist and a food addiction specialist, so you have lots of resources where you can reach out if you're dissatisfied with your personal physician right at the moment. That can give you actual medical advice, whereas I can't give you medical advice. I can only share tidbits and my personal experience. So... Take that with a grain or 10 of salt. All right, so that's your BBBE. Remember, it's a short-term solution, not a uh, not a deep dive. So, but you but anytime you do one of these types of things, remember, you can't go by a day, three days, or even a week. Anytime you follow a good protocol, you need to give it the full. You know, you need to give it a good solid month to see what changes happen. Now, during that month, you may find small things you need to change, like maybe I'm not feeling so great because I ate 10 packages of bacon Monday and Tuesday. Probably. Probably you need to evaluate that a little bit and maybe make some tweaks. But you don't say, well, that totally didn't work and scrap the whole plan. Small adjustments. Um, let's talk about your uh, one-to-one. That's where your fat and carbohydrate grams for the day uh, are the same amount of grams that you eat of protein. So if you are eating your 100 and, uh, let's say 105 grams of protein as your minimum protein goal for the day, then you're going to have the same amount of fat plus carbohydrates. Now, with the caveat, your... Um, And I would just double check that before I say it. Yes. So you're still limiting your carbohydrates for ketogenic numbers. Limiting. Carbohydrates are a limit. Even in one-to-one, -one, you can't go and then make your fat and carbs 50-50 between themselves. Your carbohydrates should be at a 20 total. Eh, actually, it doesn't have to be 20 total. You can tweak that a little bit, too. But if you are aiming for a, a, hard, a hard ketogenic food plan, very, very old school, 
100% following that, but you're also in that one-to-one -one ratio. So if you've got uh, 105 grams of protein a day, then you're going to adhere to 20 grams of carbs so that you have 85 grams of fat. You need that fat. That fat is your fuel. We've got a couple videos back where I talked about fat and how important it is and why you need to eat your fat uh, because if you're not ingesting fat, your body is not going to magically burn the fat that you have on your body. You have to eat fat to lose fat. So you need to make sure that you are limiting your carbohydrates and eating your fat even if you're following a one-to-one -one protocol. Uh, one-to-one, -one, sometimes too, um, words get confused in people's heads and they hear lots of people because almost everyone, even Dr. Naiman himself, will say you really can't overeat on protein. So not everybody has a good shutoff valve on what they should eat. And so uh, you should also pay attention to what your body needs and you will learn this over time. It takes a long time. But if you find that you're trying to do this one-to-one -one or BBBE and you find that suddenly uh, unfettered means that you're eating 300, 400 grams of protein a day, uh, it's not unlimited. While it's also not limited, it's not unfettered unlimited. They, when they say eat until you're comfortably stuffed, the answer is eat until you are so gorged that the buttons are popping off your pants and you can't even stand up anymore and you're going to just wait five minutes and then eat some more. That's not what they mean by eat until you're comfortably stuffed. What they mean is eat until you're sated. And if you eat until you're sated and you start learning those signals from your body, uh, you won't be going into 300, 400 grams of protein a day. That's a huge amount of meat. Wow, so you would be struggling if that's what you're eating. No, you won't put on fat, uh, but you will get perhaps some inflammation. Uh, you may uh, trigger some other responses that would not be favorable. So you need to find that always, that happy medium. So, and, and I keep saying 105, like 105 is normal. Listen, I'm five foot tall and I'm 105 pounds. So those are my numbers, okay? That's where it's at. Um, if you are 185 pounds, then yeah, you probably do need more protein. You probably do. And if 185 pounds is your goal, for instant, my best companion ever, Attila, you know, he's, he's like a whole foot taller than me. So yeah. He needs 180 grams of protein, but not 400 grams of protein. That would be insane. So that's where I'm saying you do have to, it's, it's, while it's not necessarily unlimited, like if you, you're supposed to eat like you're 185 because you, you're 185 pounds and that's your goal. Uh, if you need to eat like a couple times where you make up to like 225, 230, sure. But every single day, if you're eating 300 grams, over and over, uh, they can't feel good. I mean, I guess it might, especially emotionally, but in the long run, it is overdoing it. So there's, there is some, uh, if, if you don't know how to regulate that yet, yet, because it will come with time. I totally acknowledge that there are times when you're not going to be able to figure that out and that's okay. It's not a shame thing. But it is knowledge you need to carry because it's not something we talk about a lot. Uh, you know, that you don't have to track, but maybe you do if you're struggling with understanding what uh, is appropriate for your body to get the nutrients. Um, so other reasons that you might want to try that protocol. Again, I mentioned uh, eliminations to resolve issues. So if you have like autoimmune diseases, and I think I said that kind of already, but, or if you're someone who has like a lot of inflammation in general, or you retain a lot of water, uh, going to a very strict protocol can help you work through those trouble spots. Because when you come back off of it, you're going to reintroduce things, just a one, one thing at a time. 
So say I am doing a BBBE, which is beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I've done that for my 30 days. It's time to start bringing something in. No, you have to do that for a good solid week. One thing, because the first time you introduce something new and different, your body is going to be like, whoa, well, hey now. And so it's not just going to be like suddenly today, like, okay, I stopped this and today I'm introducing cucumbers. Like, first of all, that's a wild leap to make. And uh, you might experience some discomfort for that. So, but give it a few days and, and introduce that food, give your body a chance to adjust to something new and different then move to the next thing. It, it's time, it takes time to eliminate. I know a lot of people who have had to go low FODMAPs uh, and we're not even going to talk about that because that's a very complex uh, thing, but they need to do that to uh, eliminate uh, uh, issues that they're having with uh, certain foods. And it's very, very regimented and it's really beneficial to learn a lot from that elimination and then that very slow reintroduction of things. You certainly find out really oh, what kind of things you can and cannot ingest. Um, so uh, that is how a lot of people discover that they've got dairy issues or nut issues. Those are two biggies that happen to a lot of people. Um, however, uh, carnivore carnivore it's just meat now there's a lot of back and forth discussion about uh, offal uh, which organ meats uh, livers kidney heart and whether you have to eat them or you don't have to eat them how they make you feel etc etc well uh, I'm here to, I'm here to tell you there are some very beneficial nutrients in your organ meats that if you are not eating a uh, some vegetables, uh, it will be a lot easier for you to get those nutrients if you're eating the organ meats. But if you can't stomach them and you can't stand them because it's not something you've ever eaten and it is just like revolting to you, don't eat them. You may have to take a supplement. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just a fact. If you want to get all of your nutrition from food, then yes, you probably do need to eat it. But if you are okay with taking a desiccated liver pill, you can probably work through it. Uh, there are some things that you'll have to really think about with that. And of course, your uh, standard keto uh, with some ingredient restrictions is probably where a lot of people will find a lot of great success. Uh, not that you wouldn't find success with the others. There are two, but they are very strict. A keto, a good, a good ketogenic food plan is also very strict, but you have a little bit of wiggle room. So, uh, if you can, by all means, enjoy it. Uh, I will say that I think that probably the worst thing ever that has happened with the ketogenic food plans is that uh, corporations have noticed how popular it has become, which means that. Uh, People are doing a good job sharing their successes, but they've picked up on it and you could basically go on basically a, a keto junk food diet and very quickly undo your progress. Uh, we also haven't talked about things like intermittent fasting or uh, alternate day fasting or extended fasting. And quite frankly, for Wednesday, it's too much. We'll do a whole thing about fasting and fasting protocols and uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the most awesome, incredible parts about it. So there are, it's a huge range, but uh, we're just talking about this little things today. So already I just threw out a bunch of garbage and it doesn't say anything or tell you anything, right? So here's the actual answer. Start out with following if you are having a struggle go back to basics follow a very strict ketogenic food plan that means your nice fatty meats and your low glycemic cruciferous vegetables which would be things like your uh your leafy greens 
um, your uh, broccoli and cauliflower, you know, the standards, those standards. Um, it means don't be eating prepackaged foods like the keto bread buns, which in my opinion, and your opinion may differ, and that's okay. Uh, you can you can just call me some bad names in the comments, not bad words that you know will get our uh, channel uh, the naughty finger from YouTube. But you can you can be harsh with me, and I can take it. That's all right. Uh, but most of those commercial keto breads contain meat or other unsavory ingredients that are not a ketogenic friendly um, glycemic index wise. So they might work out if you're just playing some numbers games, but metabolically they are not your friend if you need to follow a ketogenic protocol. So if you eat these products and you are experiencing some struggle bus time, they are the very first thing that pretty much anyone across the board is going to tell you, stop eating that. Stop eating that for like a month and see what happens. And I think that you'll be very surprised. A lot of times, personally, my inclination is like, oh my God, things have gone off the rail. I need to cut back, cut back, cut back. I don't need to cut back. I need to take a look and see where I've gotten uh, off my path. And I've done that recently. Uh, sometimes it just happens. Uh, you know, uh, you get products in the mail. Uh, you start doing something new. Things change. It's a lot of stress. And, uh, you know, you get excited because your favorite people are promoting something new and you want to be supportive. So you order it. And then suddenly you're down the rabbit hole and uh, you've, you've thrown your plan right out the window. So... Anyone who seems too perfect because they're awesome and perfect on YouTube, just so you know, no one is. No one. No one is perfect. We all have our moments. We all have our issues. We all have some struggle bus time. So you are not alone. Reach out, ask questions. But when you're trying to decide what plan to do, start out with the easiest to adhere to and follow it follow it and see how you feel if you're not feeling right if you're experiencing inflammation if you're getting flares from your autoimmune disease if you're experiencing high uh, sugar spikes if you're generally just feeling kind of crappy then take the next step share with share with people what it is that you are doing and take their suggestions one at a time and try them out then go down and then say, well, okay, this really is not working for me. And then go to the next level and say, like, maybe let's try some carnivore. And do, do another series. Do, do a round of eliminations, but come back to your basics so you can work out what is going to make you happiest. And don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Don't worry about what's trending. Don't worry about what's getting big and what the, you know, Take a deep breath. And I say this because recently I myself have had a huge struggle. And I've talked about it like the last three uh, times I've been on the camera. You know, I fell, I bruised my sternum, it hurts real bad. And you know how we talk about the scale is a liar and it doesn't tell you the whole story? I've really been in my head because I got on the scale after I fell and I my, my weight has just gone shoo, but you know that's not fat. It's impossible. You don't gain eight pounds of fat overnight. Hello, I fell. I hurt myself. My sternum is bruised. My arm, you can't even see it anymore. My arm was bruised. My knee has a dark black stretch across it like this. You know, my hip has a bruise. Hello. Calm yourself down, Matreya. It'll go down. Stay your course. But what I did think about, though, is the fact that I have kind of been slipping down like some uh, uh, keto treatiness, you know, to soothe my feelings. And I said, all right, that's enough of that, though. You want your inflammation to go down. Uh, let's knock it out. Let's eat some whole foods for a few days. And I'm doing that. And I am actually feeling lots better. I'm expecting that stuff to start dropping off in the next day or so. Uh, 
you know, the sharpness of the pain has started to ease up a little bit. I can move around my house. We're back. We're, we're back. Right. So the other thing I wanted to encourage you is just just reach out. And if you don't want to reach out in public to a large group and then get all of that overwhelming data back, reach out to some people one on one. Uh, yes, like I said, you can uh, sign on to uh, Dr. Barry's uh, live stream. And you can, you know, just uh, do a super chat, which, you know, is not that expensive. And you can get like a real doctor answering your questions. Or you can send a private message to someone like me or uh, Christy Davis or uh, the Keto Chow people. Uh, I feel weird calling them the Keto Chow people, but you know what I mean. They're awesome and they will always answer questions. So, you know, there's a lot of avenues you have if you're not comfortable with like this big, huge, broad audience and you want to do like a one-to-one -one talk. Uh, track your track your stuff, track your exercise. Uh, if you're not feeling right, go to the doctor or uh, do something from like that. Own your labs, order labs and find out. You never know, maybe it's gonna be something really dumb like you just need a vitamin. So keep to it, don't worry, we all have been there. Every single person, and if somebody tells you they don't struggle, they are liars because everybody struggles. Everybody has their times when it's frustrating or it's getting you down, the best of the best of us. So uh, I want you to know that I think that you're doing great. Everybody that I've ever talked to from my channel or in any of the groups, you've all been amazing and hugely inspirational and it really helps me stay my course. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And I'm really super looking forward to Cheese Friday and our Sunday live stream. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.